Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. A man is not defiled by what enters his mouth, but by what comes out of it. Matthew chapter 15, verses 10 and 11. All right, here we go. Another Legion of Michael. Another one. Episode 70. Yes, it's episode 70. What goes into your body? Question mark. You guys may remember that verse from Matthew, that uh, chapter from Matthew. Uh, people were questioning Christ about, well, about the Jewish uh, habit or the Jewish instruction of kosher or, and what you can eat and what you can't eat and so forth. And uh, some of the, the religious scholars at the time were, were, were criticizing him, and he said, it's not, it is not what enters the man's mouth that defiles him, but what proceeds out of it. This is what defiles a man. We're going to talk about that a little bit today, but first of all, I want to welcome you guys, one and all, to the Legion of Michael podcast. Thank you very much for being here, for listening, for sharing the show, for letting other people know about it and so on and so forth. And, of course, it is my duty to remind you that there is this thing called legionofmichael.com. You can access it from the show notes wherever you're listening, whether it's iHeartRadio or Spotify or iTunes or wherever. It doesn't matter. You can open up your show notes, click the Legion of Michael hyperlink, and it'll take you directly to the website where you can enroll in the Legion of Michael Distance Learning Training Program Learn all about church security. This is a church security masterclass distance learning program. There you go. How about that? How about that? How about that? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And, of course, you can also support the show as well. And we would love it if you supported the show, either monetarily or morally or psychologically or (laughs) however you want to support the show and let other people know. All right. At Student of the Gun, which if you don't know, that's my other show, we've been putting a hard focus on what we eat and how we train our bodies. And uh, we thought we would consider, I thought I would consider, uh, what the Bible says on that subject. Now, if you guys remember, if you recall, uh, in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, there is a section where Peter is having a dream. He's having a dream, and he says, uh, uh, but he became hungry, and he wanted to eat. But while they were making preparations, he fell into a trance, and he saw the sky opened up, and an object like a great sheet came down, lowered by four corners to the ground, and on it were all kinds of four-footed animals and crawling creatures of the earth and birds of the sky. A voice came to him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything unholy and unclean. And a voice came to him a second time and says, What God has cleansed no longer consider unholy. There we go. Now, we've been talking about dietary uh, poisons. Uh, Unfortunately, we live in a world where, where we no longer understand how to, or it's too difficult to eat whole, sour, whole foods. And, and I'm not a hippie, but right, we have you have eggs and flour, and sugar, and you know you have meat, whatever it is, chicken, fish, pork, um, so on and so forth. But we don't do we do we take those things and we make dinners and meals and stuff out of them? No, because that's difficult. That's tough. That's time consuming. Uh, so what do we do? We go to the store and we buy processed prepackaged food that's already put together for us. So we don't have to take the vegetables and the flour and the salt and the sugar and the, you know, the oil and whatever. And we don't have to take it all and make it into a meal. We can just like put something in the microwave, open it up and shove it in our mouths. 
it's super convenient, right? Well, it seems like a great idea until you actually stop and read the ingredients and see what's in there and what's going into your body. Uh, And if you know anything about nutrition, you'll know that omega-6 oils are very bad for your body. They're bad for your heart. They're bad for your brain. They cause inflammation. Corn oil, bad. Margarine, bad. It causes inflammation. It also causes fat to build up around the heart muscle, which causes heart disease. We know that corn that consumption of corn, corn oil, and so forth causes inflammation. We know this. It's scientific. It's a scientific fact. And yet we continue to consume food that has high fructose corn syrup in it. We continue to consume food that is prepared with seed oils, corn oil, canola oil, cotton seed oil, sunflower seed oil, flax seed oil. We consume these foods that are prepared with these oils that contain omega-6s, and they're not good for us, but we still do it. Soy filler, soy protein. Years ago, they, they realized, you know, you know what? Rather than produce, like actually buy quality ingredients to put in this prepackaged food, well, that's that's expensive. So what we'll do is we'll fill it with really super cheap, inexpensive soybean, soy filler, soy protein. And uh, we'll add a bunch of spices and so forth or sugars or whatever so that people don't taste it. It's terrible for your body. We know that. I know that. Scientific, if, you, if you take five minutes to do any research, you'll realize, wow, all of that stuff uh, that is in this prepackaged food uh, is terrible for your body. It's terrible not only for your body, but your brain. Your brain is part of your body, in case you forgot. Uh, and my, I asked my my son, we were just pondering that. I said, you know, I said, the uh, the Jewish community, right, is the, the, the uh, faithful or the, the practicing Jewish community is big on, you know, they're big on the kosher. You can't eat this, and you can't eat that, and you can't eat certain things combined with each other, and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, I said to him, I said, Do th- is that that supposedly, well, I don't even know if it is anymore. I mean, supposedly that, that, that came from health. And I believe that God gave the children of Israel those instructions. He told them don't eat certain things because at the time they had an inability to properly prepare that food. And it like, for instance, pork. If you eat pork that has been properly cooked and prepared, it's fine. It's good protein. It's white meat, right? But if you eat undercooked or or poorly prepared, or if you eat pork that hasn't been butchered properly, it can be detrimental to you, right? Uh, We don't eat raw pork. We don't eat raw chicken, right? Um, And so the, uh, the instructions that were given to the Israelites were in order to keep them from eating things that were would make them sick would make them give them diseases or or you know uh illnesses and so on and so forth so it was it was for their own good right now today i should hope i should hope by by the year 2022 ad i would think we had learned how to prepare food i would hope maybe we're devolving and we don't anymore but i would think that we would know how to properly butcher food butcher food so that that the meat is not tainted uh so that it's clean when it is butchered um and that we know how to properly heat up food you know uh, my wife has been in the restaurant business all her life and she's gone through you know serve safe and she knows the pro she has a meat thermometer and she tests the meat you know uh before she serves it uh, to make sure that it has reached the proper temperature internally so that all the bacteria and so forth that, that may have been in there is killed. We understand how to do that, right? So in today's world, is keeping kosher, is it about health? Is it about physical health and consuming good food, or is it about just maintaining a habit uh, or is, is it about, well, it has nothing to do with cleanness. It's, it's about the following the rules of Moses. Um, 
But if it's about health, stick with me here. If kosher is about health, then why don't the rabbis get together and essentially declare high fructose, corn syrup, corn oils, soy filler? Why isn't that declared to be non-kosher? And maybe it is. I don't know. If you're a member of the Hebrew community out there, let me know. Is has your uh, has your rabbi or your synagogue told you that omega sixes are not kosher and don't eat them? Have they told you that soy filler is not kosher? Don't eat it. Have they told you high fructose corn syrup is not kosher? Don't eat it. Because all those things go into our bodies and they make our brains weak and undernourished. They make our bodies weak. They harm our hearts. They harm our joints. They cause, you know, increased blood pressure. Why do we do that? Now you say, well, it's not all about food, man. No, it's not. But he answered, and this is Matthew 4, 4, and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We need to consider what goes into our mouths because what goes into our mouths forms our bodies and what we do with our bodies uh, is either a, a pleasing thing to our Lord and Savior, to our Father, or it is displeasing to our Father. When he was talking about now, of course, we know that Christ is the New Testament. The New Testament. And you people say, well, you know, in the Old Testament, you weren't, you, know, you had to, the kosherness and the this and the that, and, and you had to sacrifice either the doves or the, or the sheep or the lamb or the goat or the whatever, right? Or a bull. And you met, can you guys imagine uh, going out and putting a, a bull up on a stone altar and slaughtering it there and setting it on fire? Your neighbors would probably have something to say about that. Your homeowners is, your homeowners association would probably not uh, approve. You'd probably get a nasty letter in the mail if you were in your backyard with a stone altar uh, burning bulls <laughs> or goats or whatever. But we don't have to do that anymore. That's not required of us because Christ was our sacrifice. He paid the ultimate price for us. So how do we pay him back? You know, we could go back to your body is a temple. Your body is a gift from God. You are made in the likeness and image of God. It says so in the book of Genesis. People who think that's not true. What are we doing with our bodies? Are we ensuring that our bodies are, you know, everybody's different. You're different from me. I'm different from you. Uh, you're different from your neighbors and so forth. But the fact is, I'm not asking you to keep up with me, and I'm not trying to keep up with you. What I want is for you to have the strongest body and the strongest, healthiest mind, brain. You have to feed your brain proper nutrition. And if, if you uh, didn't learn it in school because they shortchanged you, the human brain relies on fat, animal fat, to properly function. It needs that for nutrition, for nourishment. And when you deny your body animal fats, you do you deny your brain the nourishment that it needs to function properly. When you substitute animal fat for vegetable oil, what happens is not only are you improperly feeding your brain, you're damaging it. You're causing inflammation to certain critical areas of your brain. This is important. So I want you guys to think about that. What is going into your body? What are you doing with your body? Are you doing the absolute best that you can for your body? Are you maximizing the potential that God has given you? He's given you this body. Now, whether that body is 50 years old or 30 years old or 70 years old or whatever, that is the body you were given by God. That is what you've got to work with. And are you using it to its fullest potential or are you denying your potential because, well, it's just convenient to grab whatever and shove it in my mouth and eat it. Are you disciplining your bodies? You know, uh, the, the process of fasting is not just about the physical act. It's about the mentally mental discipline. It takes mental discipline. There's a reason that Christ endorsed fasting. 
because it takes mental discipline to control your body and not do what your body wants. Because your body's like, give me food, give me food, give me sweet stuff, give me salty stuff, give me whatever, give me, give me, give me, give me. But your brain needs to take control. You need to have, quote, impulse control. You need to have impulse control and tell your, your body, nope, you're not getting that. We're not going to eat that. Matter of fact, we're not going to eat anything right now. We're just going to drink water and we're going to contemplate our lives. That's a good thing. We need to take control over our bodies and our brains. We need to put our minds in control. We need to make sure that our mind, that our brain is properly nourished, that is given the nutrition that it needs to function at 100%. And unfortunately, uh, if you look around uh, the United States of America, you'll see that there are a lot of your friends, neighbors, coworkers, and relatives uh, whose brains are not working at 100% capacity. They might think they are. And they might scream at you that they are, but they're not. And you can tell because they have no impulse control. You can tell because they, it, rather than be, uh, be guided by facts, they're guided by emotion. Yeah. Wow, you're like, wow, I know a lot of people like that. Yeah. Do you know why those people are like that? Those people are like that because they eat garbage and their brains are not functioning properly. Consider what it is that goes in your body. Consider what it is that you're doing with your body. Be honest with yourself and ask yourself, am I living up to the full potential physically that God gave me? Or am I just coasting? Or am I just coasting? You Only you can answer that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you very much for being with me. Thank you for being here for 70 episodes of the Legion of Michael. And if you're just now discovering this, well, the good news is you can go back and you can listen again and again and again and again and again. You can binge listen all you want. We're going to go ahead and close out, as we always do, with the warrior's prayer. Lord, I come before you seeking the strength and skill to overcome my enemies. Grant me, I pray, the wisdom to recognize evil, the courage to confront it, and the strength to destroy it. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen.